San Louis, Senegal. The former colonial capital of French Africa now has an unfortunate claim to fame. It is the city most threatened by rising sea levels in the whole of Africa. And every rainy season, thousands of people face upheaval from flood devastation. This man is trying to save the port city from the onslaught of water, but for the mayor of Saint Louis, Sheikh Mamadou Ababoule Dje, the prospects are bleak. If things keep going the way they are, the whole city of Saint Louis will have to be moved. But it's just an idea, a possibility that we do not want to contemplate. He'll show us the problems in Saint Louis, and we follow him as he brings the plight of his city to the World Mayor's Summit on Climate in Mexico City. There, he also learns lessons from Mexico City itself, which has suffered its share of emergencies from natural disasters. With over half of the world's population living in cities, mayors like him across the world are sharing strategies in how to prepare when disaster strikes. In this episode, the mayor of San Luis, Senegal, is our Earth reporter, and this is his story. Saint Louis is very special because it is the history and the soul of the country. Great intellectuals of this country were educated here. Whether be it religion, politics or academics, Senegal was invented here. I was born in Saint Louis on November 12, 1965. Being a child in Saint Louis is very pleasant. As you can imagine, we have everything we need to satisfy children. Playgrounds, people getting along, families living in harmony, with everyone participating in the education of everyone. But here in Saint Louis, what makes it beautiful is also its weakness. We are in a zone which is extremely exposed. There are 4,800 hectares of which two thirds are at risk of flooding. So you see, it's an extremely fragile area. Look, here you've got the river, and just 200 meters away you have to see. And that's what poses a lot of problems in relation to climate change. How can the city adapt? How will we make sure that what makes the beauty of our city doesn't cause a disaster? At City Hall, flooding affects every aspect of Mayor Jay's work. And with global sea levels predicted to rise and more intense rains expected due to climate change, these problems could get worse for the city's 250,000 residents. But protecting the city's coastline comes under the responsibility of the national government. They are still trying to raise the $30 million needed just to repair coastal defenses. Such amounts are a tall order for one of the poorest countries in the world. Saint Louis' own annual budget is barely $5 million. Saint Louis is in an area of water. So when the sea advances, the 17 kilometers, of course, is threatened. And on the other side, when you go further, the water arrives to Saint Louis, it's the whole island that becomes a problem. It's extremely urgent that we proceed in relation to climate change to protect this strip of land, which in itself has over 80,000 people. The population density that exists in the Fisherman's District is found nowhere else in Africa. This problem of the interaction between climate change and quality of life in Saint Louis leaves us no choice but to create awareness both in Senegal and worldwide to prevent this from happening. I remember my grandmother used to tell me when she was a very little child, she had to walk 300 meters to reach the sea. Now you can see that the sea is just half a meter away from the houses. And when there is a storm, 
the waves are right inside the houses. Here is the protection dike, which was built in the last century. And you can see the level of degradation. How can we keep ourselves safe, our children safe, with this wall as our only protection? It is an even continuous, as just 50 meters further, the wall doesn't exist anymore. And the houses are all exposed to the fury of the sea. This year, the rainwater came right into our houses. I couldn't cook, and there were some days that the children did not eat. The second rain threw me into complete despair. I didn't know what to do or where to go. These difficulties affected me and most of my neighbors. We are desperate for help. Even if the money is raised to protect the coast, on the other side of the city, the rising river level is the threat. With increased rains causing the river to swell, a dike was built in 2000 to contain the river. But when battling against natural elements, sometimes the solution can also create other problems. So now we're going to visit the East Dike, which goes around the So Island. It is simply to show you that when there are problems linked to climate change, taking action is always desirable. But to take action, one must spend wisely and think deeply. We are here today at the East Dyke, but this dyke, as much as it is important in protecting from the swell of the river, it does as well create problems with rainwater. It acts as a funnel holding the rainwater and the flood from reaching the houses, but all that water will be trapped here. You understand it's extremely toxic for the people because the people have decided to come and dwell in unsuitable areas. Due to the high cost of housing, they had nowhere else to go, so they are forced to come here. Here is a striking example. They do not have the means to buy sand to build embankment, so they use garbage, which is all they have. So when the water arrives, you can imagine the danger to the health, to the children's health and the general health of the city. To live in garbage mixed with rainwater or wastewater. This is an explosive cocktail, which is a huge threat to the public health and to the quality of life in Saint Louis. It is important that you understand what it is like for someone to live in this situation on a daily basis with their children. So here we are with Mr. Sen, who was one of the very first residents of this area. This year, we have this embankment. It was fine during the dry season, but three months ago, we had such big levels of water. 
there were some young children who died. Next door, there was an asthmatic child who died right in front of me. When we have these projections, which are extremely pessimistic, threat of disappearing completely, it scares me. What is going to happen for future generations? I don't know. So we are here in St. Louis Hospital, and when the rain waters come, and with all the other phenomenon related to climate change, you can imagine the extremely precarious outcome for the population. So we are here looking at the cell of the hospital. And I'm here with the person responsible for the hygiene in here. And I think better than anyone he can explain the problem. This cell gets completely flooded. The hospital is built over these flooded cellars, which breeds mosquitoes. So the hospital is always full of mosquitoes. It causes a lot of problems. We are now in the cell of St. Louis Hospital. So this is the same situation for all buildings in the whole heritage town. So you can see that it is completely flooded by the rising infiltration due to the swelling of the river. Sometimes this water will mix with sewage water, which makes for a gross and disgusting mixture. Sometimes as well, it mixes with electrical cables, which create huge problems. All of this is linked to climate change, which is threatening the city. In only a few months' time, the rains will arrive, bringing more flooding, sewage and disease to St. Louis. It could get worse. Experts say that weather patterns in West Africa may be even more unpredictable due to climate change. Mayor Jay realizes that the problems facing St. Louis are much bigger than his small office or the country of Senegal can handle. So he decides it is time to take their plight to the international stage. He will attend the World Mayor's Summit on Climate in Mexico City. Will he be able to get the problems of San Luis heard by the leaders of other cities of the world? Mexico City, the World Mayor's Summit on Climate, part of an international effort encouraging mayors to prioritize disaster risk reduction. The hope is that cities will invest to combat the causes and effects of climate change where national governments have lagged behind. Well, basically, I think um, local governments can take the lead and not wait for national governments to come to uh, some agreement because um, the needs of our people are here and now. It is an opportunity for Mayor Jay to put the concerns of San Louis alongside those of big cities from Europe and America. The colossal budgets in the cities of the north frustrates me a lot. The citizens of Toronto, Tokyo and Paris shouldn't be relaxed about climate change when others in the south, particularly San Louis, are taking the brunt and they're not the ones responsible. We are here, and we do not contribute to climate change, but I can assure you that African cities are the ones that suffer the most from the effects of climate change. I'm here to bring the voice that is not often heard and often not invited 
and that is part of this wall. And it is important that the world as a whole this time shows it is capable of solidarity. It requires not just to look left and right, but to look up and down, and that's the message I bring to you today. Thank you very much. At the end of the day, Mayor Jay gets the opportunity to speak with Marcelo Ebrard, the mayor of Mexico City, who is hosting the event. He governs a city which is almost the size of the entire country of Senegal. As they met, he was preparing for the Cancun Climate Change Conference, in which he is a key player. We have a similar approach to the trouble that we are facing. So the national governments are taking decisions very slow way and we, you and me, and all the cities confront the risk, the risk in the short term. And that is why it is good that Mexico City is an advocate of poor small cities who are victims of climate change. And for Cancun and other initiatives you are directing, it would be very interesting if the solidarity could help in terms of accountability for climate change. I think it is very important. So we are going to, to go to Cancun mm -hmm. in order to fight for money mm -hmm. and justice, mm -hmm. uh, an equal approach from climate action. Okay. No? You know, when there's a flood, it's the mayor that people call, not the president of the country. I know, <laughs> it's the same thing, it's the same thing all over the world. <laughs> With the conference over, Mayor Jay takes time to survey Mexico City to see if there is anything to learn from the megapolis for tiny San Luis. This is huge, absolutely magnificent. On the surface, it has little in common with the small city of San Luis. But Mexico City is in constant battle against its natural environment. It is surrounded by active volcanoes and is threatened by devastating earthquakes and flooding. Mayor Jay is here to find out how Mexico City copes with potential disasters. In 1985, the city suffered an earthquake which measured 8.1 on the Richter scale. The death toll? Over 10,000 people. The city has put in many anti-earthquake measures, but the real challenge was in preparing the citizens themselves. How can you prepare the people against an earthquake? Because we forget fastly. Because a painful memory. So you try to avoid to have memories about 85 and the earthquake. So how to promote uh, uh, practices in the schools and in the labor places, uh, offices, or, uh, with a society who wants to forget. So we establish um, day by day basis as an exercise, not necessarily talk about the next earthquake, but talk about what to do if you face another earthquake. At the National Medical Center, a mural depicts what the hospital went through during the earthquake. On a private tour, Mayor Jay sees firsthand many of the measures to protect the hospital. Many units of the hospital were relocated to the interior of the country, away from the earthquake zone. And the existing buildings were refurbished to protect essential services. Mr. Mayor, we are here in the electric control center of the hospital. We have a regular system here, controlled by high definition equipment. 
But we also have this backup generator that will come into action seven seconds after the city loses power. And up here, this system of uh, pipes carries oxygen, steam, and nitric oxide, everything that we consider vital lines for the hospital. On his last day, Mayor Jay finds that San Luis and Mexico City do share a common threat, flooding. Surprisingly, although Mexico City is at an altitude of over 2,000 meters, it is in fact built in a valley on a dried up lake bed. And when there is heavy rain, there is flash flooding in many parts of the city. In 2010, over 30 people were killed by a single flood. We are a city in a lake, in a high altitude. So if you have changes in the pattern of rain, this city is going to be in risk. As a matter of fact, we are in risk every time. But uh, especially the past five years, we observed uh, dramatical changes in the rain pattern, which means we have more water in less time. So it's very risky for the city. And if this trend continues the next years, the city can have really a risky situation, a high risk situation, more even than an earthquake. Mexico City has invested in a billion dollar drainage tunnel that will reduce the risk of flooding. But Mayor Jay visits one of the city's leading water experts to find out that when it comes to overcoming natural obstacles, monetary solutions are not enough. You have to engage with the real lives of your citizens. Los Mexicanos in the city of Mexico, we took out the water, then we put in a city. So we're going to see this map over there. Tenochtitlan was like this. When it rains, a lot of the streets are flooded. In my point of view, the radical transformation in the story of urbanism has been done here because we took out the water and put in a city. This is the problem of Mexico City. How are we going to solve this problem? So, are you optimist in the capacity of uh, Mexico City to manage the problem, or do you think, like others, the situation is completely lost? I am very optimistic about the social forces present among those living in Mexico City. I don't believe in architects' models, no matter how famous they are, or technicians or big companies or governments, unless they understand that they must express the will of the people. If a society doesn't understand how nature works, it will end in catastrophe and failure. We have to be less arrogant and superior with our knowledge and understand that nature has a lot to teach us. Here in Mexico, we built a society against nature, and now we're going back to working with nature. Well, I hope, like me, you were impressed with the great energy of the Professor Jorge. We've learned that everywhere in the world, cities resemble each other, and the people are battling against the natural elements, against climate change, against flooding, but everywhere, there is a great hope, despite of the difficulties, to make sure that life goes on and that people continue to have their place in their own cities. The mayor has returned home to San Luis. The trip to Mexico City did not offer any quick solutions against the rising sea, but Mayor Jay hopes that he is no longer alone in facing the problem. It was an important moment for Saint Louis to share its knowledge and learn from other experiences. The effects of climate change are global and they call on the conscience of everyone. 
We are all responsible for taking care of the planet today. We have to change our methods. We have to change our behavior for a better world and for the best upbringing we can have for our children. Anyone can be an Earth reporter. To find out more about how to join the global conversation, go to open.ac.uk forward slash openlearn forward slash earthreporters.